So when we're looking at these tumor suppressor proteins, and we, we know that we can get, you know, um, th th their inactivation is important in cancers, it turns out there's, there's even more methods of reducing um, expression of genes to, to reducing um, the presence of these proteins in cells. And this one's not through mutation or loss of heterozygosity, it's through a process of um, epigenetic change to DNA. So the change that occurs to the DNA is the methylation of the DNA. And a methylated DNA in the vicinity of a promoter can lead to reduced promoter activity. So even though there's no mutation in the gene, you get less expression of the gene. So you get a reduction in the amount of these suppressors, and therefore you, you think about the car analogy, you get less break in the car, and therefore you get more growth in the cell. So DNA methylation can inactivate tumor suppressor genes. So well, I'm sure you've come across DNA methylation before, but just as a summary, um, it's the cytosine bases, so there's four base types in DNA. Um, one of those base types, cytosine, can be methylated. Okay? Now, um, and, and, and heavily methylated DNA in the promoter region of a gene can reduce the activity of the promoter. So, where does methylation occur? It's quite common, and it occurs to, and it can be found in a cytosine that's 5' prime to a guanosine. So the sequence would be CPG, that's just the phosphate bond joining the two bases. So a CG, so the C is 5' prime to the G, because you're going from the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction. And therefore, if, if the sequence is um, CG, then there are other proteins in the cell that can recognize that simple sequence and can methylate that cytosine. And if you, um, if it turns out that there are if there's multiple copies of C and G, it's called a CPG island, when you get multiple copies of these things occurring. And these are often found within promoters of the tumor suppressor genes. So when these um, CPG islands these um, become methylated within a gene promoter, they cause um, a repression of transcription of that gene. So how does this, um, how do we block transcription through methylating DNA? Well, there's a protein complex that recognizes methylated CPGs, okay? And it doesn't, doesn't recognize CPGs that are not methylated. So it recognizes methylated CPGs. And this protein activity is called a histone deacetylase. So now we need to think back to um, how DNA is packaged in the cell, and we know that in a cell the DNA is packaged and wrapped around this, these proteins called histone proteins. So you've got a histone octoma with DNA wrapped around it, and that's called a nucleosome. And um, effectively, these histone proteins can be acetylated or deacetylated on their lysine residues. Okay, these are proteins which DNA is wrapped around and you can acetylate and deacetylate these proteins. And methylated CPG, so methylated DNA, which is um, around one of these histones, the, um, the methylated DNA brings in this deacetylase activity that can then change the methylation status of the histone. So histone deacetylase removes an acetate group from the side chains of the histone molecules. And this converts this nucleosome, this complex of DNA and um, histone protein, it converts this um, chromatin into a configuration that blocks transcription. And I've got a figure that shows that at some point. Okay, here we go. So this big disc-like structure here is a nucleosome. The nucleosome is made up of eight histones, and the nucleosome has histone tails that can be acetylated. And wrapped around the nucleosome is 
this white string, which is my representation of DNA. So we've got loops of DNA wrapped around the histone core, and this nucleosome is, or this chromatin, is in a in a um, a structure that favours transcription. So I've tried to draw the DNA being loosely wrapped around the histones. Okay, so it's loosely wrapped because the histone, um, the, 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 the DNA backbone is negatively charged and the lysines are positively charged. When you acetylate lysines, you lose that positive charge. So there's less attraction between the histones and the DNA. And because there's less attraction, the DNA is less compacted and therefore it's accessible for transcription. So this, this favors transcription. Okay. Now, how does methylation fit into this? Suddenly, I've started talking about acetylation, where I was talking about methylation. Okay. Now, let's consider this kind of chromatin, this, this nucleosome, these histones and DNA. Let's consider what it looks like when the DNA is methylated. So, if you methylate the DNA, these CPG islands, the methylation brings in this enzyme to the DNA called a histone deacetylase. So methylated DNA brings in a histone deacetylase. The deacetylase then removes the acetyl groups from the histone um, proteins. So the lysine residues now uh, return to their positively charged forms. So positively charged histones bind strongly to negatively charged DNA. So I've drawn the DNA here as being black just for the sake of it, but what's important is that I've shown, trying to show a strong interaction here between the DNA and the histone because of the, 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 the positive and negative charges binding strongly. Now when you've got a tightly wrapped um, nucleosome, when the DNA is tightly wrapped around the nucleosome, it's not as easily accessible by these transcription factors and therefore it blocks transcription okay so in summary methylation of these CPG islands is effective at shutting down these tumor suppressor genes so within the promoters of tumor suppressor genes and, and it's particularly these tumor suppressor genes that they contain these CPG islands and they become methylated inappropriately, which silences their promoters and turns off the expression of these important tumor suppressors. And the absence of the suppressor leads to inappropriate growth. So it's become apparent over you know, time that methylation is important in shutting down tumor suppressor genes such as the retinoblastoma which has um, a lot of these CPG islands in its promoters its promoter and um, in addition to um, somatic mutations you can also get um, promoter methylation shutting down retinoblastoma and other tumor suppressor genes. Here's another slide that shows this same information um, where you once you get methylation of DNA, you bring in the deacetylase, you reintroduce, you know, you remove the acetyl groups and therefore the lysines become positively charged, and then the lysines of the um, nucleosomes bind strongly to the DNA and turn the gene off. Okay, and um, so when you look at the, um, the, these promoter regions from um, tumor samples, um, you look at um, DNA from a tumor sample here, and it's these blue blobs here indicate highly methylated regions of DNA. And when you compare from the same um, patient, but just from the, um, the non-tumorous um, samples, the normal cells, there's less um, methylation. Okay? And then when you look at a control, for, you know, it's, in other words, same kind of samples, from another individual then who doesn't have um, the, the, the tumor, then you, there's much less methylation in those same regions.
So people are starting to identify that in these um, tumor samples, you have um, high rates of methylation. And when, this high, when these methylations occur in the promoter region of these tumor suppressor genes, the methylation leads to switching off of the genes and therefore loss of a tumor suppressor function. Here's just some examples. So um, examples of hypermethylated genes from human um, tumor cells. So a whole bunch of genes here. Um, there's the retinoblastoma gene here <coughs> and the APC gene that we've looked at already. Um, so the, um, these different tumor suppressor genes um, are knocked out by the methylation of the promoter and knocking out these tumor suppressor genes is important in these diverse types of cancers here. So many different types of cancer have noticed that tumor suppressor genes are knocked out not only through um, loss of heterozygosity but also through promoter methylation. Now there's another different effect which has been observed as well and that um, through cancer progression sometimes you notice um, DNA methylation decreasing overall okay so rather than looking at just the promoters of these where these CPG islands are you just look at the genome generally and you get um, hypomethylation so less methylation and this is attributed to chromosome instability and then um, this leads to all sorts of um, problems for the cell.